Welcome back. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, four different tests that you can use to determine whether an infinite series converges or diverges. Okay, so today we're going to start by looking at the test that I have written down and that is called the comparison test. Okay, so the comparison test um, uh, we, works this way. Let's say that we have a series a sub n that has no negative terms. Then one way of determining whether that series converges is if you can find another series where every term in the second series or the c sub n series, this one right here, all the c sub n's are bigger than the a sub n's. Okay, So everything in the c series is bigger than everything in the a series. Then if the C series converges, then the A series converges. And this makes sense because if you say the big guy, the one that has all the big terms, that converges, then the little guy, the one with all the little terms, that must converge as well. Okay. Similarly, uh, in part B it says that the series A sub n diverges if you can find a divergent series d sub n's where the a sub n's are always bigger than the d sub n's. Okay, so if you can find that the a sub n's are always bigger than the d sub n's and the series d sub n diverges, then the series a sub n diverges. In other words, if the little guy diverges, then the big guy diverges. Okay, so if the smaller one is infinite, then obviously the bigger one is infinite as well. Okay, so this is called the comparison test, and you'll get to see an example of the comparison test later. The next test that I want to share with you that is super helpful in determining whether a infinite series converges or diverges is called the limit comparison test. Now the limit comparison test is a lot more powerful than the comparison test because you don't actually have to show a greater than less than relationship between the two sequences. You just choose one sequence that seems like it could sort of converge or diverge like the other sequence and use those as a comparison. So um, let's run through this real quick. Uh, the theorem says suppose that we have all the a sub n's are greater than zero and all the b sub n's are greater than zero. Then if we compare the limit as n goes to infinity of the a sub n's over the b sub n's and we get c that is positive, then the sum of the a sub n's and the sum of the b sub n's do the same thing. They converge or diverge together. So typically what happens is you put the thing you know about, you know if it converges or diverges, that goes on the bottom. The thing you don't know if it converges or diverges, that goes on the top. Okay, so the thing you know goes on the bottom, the thing you don't know goes on the top. And then you're asking the question, do these things what happens if you get a limit and it's a positive number, then if you know what the bottom one does, the top one does the same. In part two, similar, except instead of getting a positive number, you get zero. And if it, you get a zero, then you only get good information if the bottom one converges. And that means that the top one converges. In other words, uh, what does it take for a limit to be zero? It means that the top thing is kind of smaller than the bottom. So if the bottom one converges and the top's even smaller, then the top one converges. And third, if you get infinity out, and if something's going to infinity, that means that the top is getting quite big compared to the bottom. And so if the bottom one diverges and the top one's even bigger, then the top one must diverge. And that's basically what the limit comparison test says. Uh, so later, you'll get to look at some specific examples of how to use the limit comparison test. The third test I'd like to show you is called the ratio test. And the ratio test says the following. Uh, let the sum of the a sub n's be a series with positive terms 
and suppose that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is equal to p. Then the series will converge if that number p is less than 1. The series diverges if the number p is bigger than 1. And if p is 1, the test fails. And this is really important. What does it mean for the test to fail? Well, it really means it could converge or diverge. I just don't know. The ratio test just isn't going to get the job done for you. So you might have to go back and use the limit comparison test or the comparison test, the divergence test, the integral test, some other test to get the job done. The ratio test isn't going to do it. But the ratio test is kind of my favorite test. It's kind of the go-to test for infinite series. If, if I see something and I think that the ratio test is going to get the job done, that's maybe what I'll try first. It's very powerful, and you'll get to look at some examples of how we use this thing. The last test I want to show you today is called the root test, and the root test says the following. Uh, let's say that we have a sum of a sub n's is an infinite series, and it has positive terms. And this time, this is the big difference from the ratio test is you have this limit right here. It's not the limit of the ratio anymore. It's the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of a sub n. And let's say that that's equal to some number p. Then everything here uh, in the test itself, like p being less than 1, p being greater than 1, or p being equal to 1, it's exactly the same as the ratio test. So you don't have to memorize two different things for the ratio and root test. They have the exact same test values. What the difference is, is the test itself. One, you test the ratio of the a plus a sub n plus first term to the a sub nth term. That's the ratio test. And in the root test, you test the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of a sub n. Okay, so it's a slightly different test, but it gives uh, very similar results. Some are good in some situations, some are good in others. So let's take a look at some of these situations.